analog sucks sometimes today i want to share five reasons why i believe you should stay away from analog hardware number five recall when it comes to analog there are a couple of units that offer digital recall meaning that you can connect the unit to your computer via usb and save the settings with your session every time you open up that session you have instant recall Two companies that have digital recall implemented are Better Maker and Wes Audio. Other than that, if you need to make a revision, you have to deal with manual recall, setting all the knobs in the right place so you can get the same sound. Here we are talking about taking picture of the analog and do the recall based on that, writing the settings down or using a software like Session Recall. all those options suck it takes time and it kills the workflow number four real-time rendering this one might not seem that bad but depending on your workflow it can be annoying to deal with for example i like working with drafts that means multiple revisions for every song i mix when you use analog, it's not like with plugins. When you export the song, you have to actually run the audio in real time through the gear. A five minute song mixed in the box 100% with just plugins can be exported in under one minute, depending on what plugins you use. But a five minute song mixed hybrid using analog equals five minute real time render. So every draft means five minutes. That adds up really fast. Not to mention that sometimes the DAW or the audio engine can cause audible artifacts and you have to restart the render from scratch. Number three, workflow. With plugins, you can change the order of your chain and you can do all sorts of crazy processing. When it comes to analog, you are limited. If you want to change order in the analog realm, you have three options. Change cables, use an insert machine, or have separate converters in and out for every piece of gear. Changing cables is time consuming and can kill the creative flow. Insert machines can be really expensive. When we are talking about converters, they add up to the cost of the hybrid system. Plus you need great quality converters. Also a big thing is that you can use analog just once. You either use it and print the audio so you can use it again or you buy multiple units. Number two, price. With plugins nowadays, we are in heaven. Sale after sale, you can get top plugins for next to nothing. There are also lots of free stuff that can be used to achieve great songs. And when you purchase a DAW, you already have top quality stock plugins. High-end analog gear is expensive. For example, a classic vocal processing chain, 1176 into an LA-2A plus an EQ, let's say a Pultec, can be over 10k an 1176 is 2.5k and la2a 4.5k and, and a pull tech eq 4k just think about how crazy that is more than 10k for a mono vocal chain also you have to consider additional costs for maintenance tubes repairs and other things like that number one Cables. A single stereo piece of gear needs the following cables. One left in, one left out. One right in, one right out, plus the power cable. That's five cables for just a single piece of gear. If you have 10 analog pieces of gear, that's a lot of cables and it can get messy really fast. Then you add insert machines, converters, and you have a hot cable mess that's almost impossible to manage. I have never saw a studio that has the cables organized. You can hide it, but you know that the mess is there. Having the cable available is a must if you are experimenting in the studio. Cables are hard to clean, they gather dust, are ugly, and not to mention they can be really expensive. Those are just five things that are really annoying when it comes to analog. Don't get me wrong, I love analog, but sometimes it sucks.